take it out, you don't pay taxes on that. Put money in savings accounts, and money markets accounts. All that money is untaxed. The tax, remember, the fair tax is only on new goods and services, not savings. $11 trillion. The trillions, we're, we, we've heard a lot about trillions this year. Amount of American dollars held off in offshore banks to avoid taxes. Europe, Asia, South America, the Caribbean. That, I, I'm not a banker, but I do know that when banks get money from people saving, they turn around and invest that into America, into, into research and development, industry, and that helps us all because it makes prices go down, it makes our more wealth for our country. This money is sitting in other countries. This is American money, and it's doing nothing for America to avoid taxes. And um, $345 billion, that's, uh, that's, I guess that's really not that much these days, but um, I think it's a lot. Uh, this is the tax gap for the underground economy. These are things like um, pornography, illicit drugs, illegal labor. This is how much money it's being generated, and of course, cash. Yeah, they don't pay tax on that. Um, it's made up by us by about $2,000 per taxpayer. Um, I love this number. One trillion dollar is the value of the economy of just illicit drugs, pornography, and illegal labor. That's how much, and that money is not being taxed at all. Under a fair tax system, if a drug dealer goes to the uh, car, car dealer and buys you know, his Mercedes Benz, he's going to pay 23% tax. If someone who's here working illegally, they're going to pay 23% tax when they check out uh, at, at, a, at you know, the local restaurant. So it broadens the tax base is the, under the fair tax. Uh, everyone's heard this before, you know, oh, to avoid taxes, we'll just move our company offshore. What reason would a business have to move offshore when they're paying no income tax in America under the fair tax? So, uh, why change, you ask? Compliance with the, all the money and time compliance with the current income tax is gone. 22% embedded, embedded tax gone. Negative personal savings rate gone. Offshore, gone, gone, gone. And the government has more money than ever. Uh, actually, that you just pre preluded my next slide. I love this. This I love this uh, chart. Um, this is a fair tax simulation that was run under our research. Uh, that looked at ten years after the fair tax passed, what would happen to our gross domestic product, our employment, domestic investment, income, consumption, and disposable personal income. Now, um, I'm just going to hit a couple of these. Obviously, if people have more money to spend, they're going to spend more money. It increases by 11.7% in 10 years. Of course, employment goes up because businesses have more money to hire. They have their, all of their money. 9% increase. Gross domestic product explodes. Um, uh, disposable personal income increases. More money for savings. So the fair tax would, just, would, would be a boom for the economy unlike the likes of which we've never seen um, under, under the fair tax. Now, the, um, uh, Sandy asked me to put a little bit of, of uh, um, flat tax versus fair tax in my presentation, so I'm going to switch gears to that real quick. Let me start by saying I am not an enemy of the flat tax. If you're looking for an enemy, I am not it. The flat tax would be an enormous improvement over our current income tax system. Enormous. But everything the flat tax does, the fair tax does, but the fair tax goes further. Now, uh, I am not, uh, I'm a physician, and uh, when I get a case that's outside my area of expertise, I consult an expert. I'm a fair tax guy. I am not a flat tax expert. So I consulted a flat tax expert, and that my flat tax expert is Dennis Calabrese. He was the former Chief of Staff to Majority Leader Dick Armey. Um, Dick Armey is considered the congressional far father of the flat tax. And uh, Dennis Calabrese said, um, he said, I've studied every tax plan there is and none more than the flat tax. As for the best replacement, the fair tax is the American way. Um, Dennis Calabrese. <laughs> yeah, hey, you, yeah that's, how he, that's how he puts it. Um, 
Well, why not, right? Um, yeah, you got more sense than the average politician. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dennis is, he, he's a, a huge supporter of the fair tax. He was a flat taxer, he became a fair taxer. And the next points I'm going to make come from an article of his, of his that he wrote um, that you can actually look up online. Uh, and I'm blanking on the name on it right now. Um, it'll come to me. Oh, it's called Confessions of a Flat Taxer. And you can look that up online. I'll, I'll put a link on my website, which I'll give you at the end, so you guys can find it easy. And you can read that yourself. But th th those are the points that I'm going to make. So uh, we had a nice introduction about the flat tax. And just just for fun, uh, we have any flat taxers here besides Sandy? Anybody? No? no? Rats. Okay. <laughs> You're not sure. We're undecided. Let's, let's get a question to the audience. How many flat tax bills are in Congress? I, I like the flat tax. Okay. Which which bill? Well, if you make so much, you pay so much. And, and, and IRS is out of it and take the pork barrel out of Washington. Actually, the IRS isn't out of it under okay. under a flat tax. Yeah. And you make so much, you pay so much. And okay. That's it. Okay. Uh, any other fans? Anybody have a favorite flat, flat tax bill? There's actually three. There, there, I think there was four flat tax bills. Um, anyone have a favorite? No? Okay. All right. Fair tax and charge too much and you buy something. <laughs> a lot of people say that. A lot of people say that. But remember, I, you, I, I think every time you buy something, you're paying a heavy tax, and I don't like that. Oh, and that's fair. Uh, and that's, that's about well, my... Well, it could be fair and it could not be fair. You don't have to buy new. Depends on how much you and charge. If you go buy a one-year-old car, sounds pretty high to me. That's an interesting point. Yeah, you wouldn't have to. If you bought all used goods, you would never pay tax. That's true. That's what I was thinking. That would make the, the cost of used goods skyrocket. It, well, I don't know. Skyrocket is the, the particular, but it would, but it would, but it would raise. It would raise the cost of used goods because the demand would increase for used goods. The price goods. of goods goes down in the fair tax because there's more money out there to open businesses, which is more competition. Correct. So you can buy new stuff and not pay that amount of money, and it would because the price of goods are down. Right, and, and that's work. and that's what would happen yeah. with the price of used goods and new goods. They would even they would even out to a new level. You think there's a lot of yard sales now? <laughs> <laughs> they're they're they, they're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. So let's take a quick. We'll take a quick comparison between um, the two. Under a flat tax, do individuals still have to? File tax returns. The answer is yes, we all do. Under a fair tax, you never do. Individuals do not. Remember, businesses are collecting it. No. Does the does the IRS audit individuals under a flat tax? Yes, they do because you're paying an income tax, so you can still be audited. Under a fair tax, no. Businesses. Why? Kind of ah, we'll get to that in a second. The IRS polices 120 million tax returns. That's how many tax returns they do now. It's the same under a flat tax. Under, under the fair tax, you only have to police 14 million tax returns because you're only, tax, you're only collecting taxes from businesses. A lot less resources and energy and money to look at people avoiding taxes under a fair tax. Income and payroll taxes, you still pay them under a flat tax. Under the fair tax, they are gone. Uh, businesses have to, still have to comply with tons of rules and regulations. 